Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. It is Chef Jazz, Crone Survivor and founder of Green Panther Chef, where we teach you the skills necessary to bridge the gap in between cannabis and food for health and happiness. Today, a recipe I'm gonna be sharing with you is a vegetable soup. It's a recipe that I've actually used since I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and it's a bit a little difficult actually to start eating. So today, I wanna to show you basically how I set that up, and it's super simple for everyday wellness. The strands that we're going to be using today are Blue Dream. That's one of my favorite strands. And how you do that is just by starting in the cast iron pot. I love using cast iron dishes is one because of the mineral minerals that lie inside of the pot. And then also because like it gives you a little bit of leeway as well. It doesn't burn so easily and things like that. So I love if I encourage everyone to have a cast iron cast iron skillet or at least a Dutch oven and that's what we're going to be using for this vegetable soup. So all of our recipes I'm going to be flowing through completely today and so I just want you to know that all recipes are going to be linked in the bio below. So don't feel like I left you or I lost you or anything like that. So just hang tight and just like let me know how you feel. All right. We'll start with a little bit of our regular extra virgin olive oil. If you do not know, all right, so if you cook, if you're cooking with cannabis, it's certain temperatures that you have to stay inside of. When I teach cooking classes, you want to stay inside of a bracket of around like 220 to 320 degrees because that burns off all of the terpenes and the cannabinoids. And so what I do is when I start to cook, I like to start with a basic extra virgin olive oil. And what that means is it has a higher temperature. And so I can um, get a higher smoke point on that. So in the bottom of my cast iron pan, of course, I'm just going to add a little bit of our extra virgin olive oil. And like I said, we are doing a vegetable soup. And I start off on the bottom with just a little bit of garlic. Garlic has great anti-inflammatory and great antimicrobial benefits. And it's something that I've used quite a bit, you know, inside of my cooking as well. And so you just want to soften these and cook it down. You do not want your garlic to burn at all. So I would probably say about 30 seconds. And how do you know that? You start to smell it. I am the type of person, you can smell the food and you'll know when it's kind of ready or it's getting close to. So it's an all senses, all hands on deck type of, type of experience. So after that garlic has started to brown, you want to add a little bit of onion. We did slice these onions. And keep this over like a medium low heat. So we just want to get those nice and pretty. We do not want these to brown. And so if you add salt, it draws the water out of the actual onions. And so it doesn't brown as easily. If you want to caramelize, of course, you want to hold off until the very end. So I just added a little bit of salt and pepper into our cast iron skillet here. And you just want to cook these until they are nice and soft probably about three minutes, right? This is something that I learned actually in cooking school. I mean, if you need a good base to a soup, you know, what is better than just like a good Trinity or a good mirepoix? And today, what a mirepoix is, if you don't know, that's just onion, celery, and carrot. And I love to put that in all of my stocks. Or if you like to see, or it's like, or if you like to, um, Look at any of our literature. What I like to call it is a bud broth or my buddy broth. I put that in everything, right? So you're already seeing <clears throat> that we're starting off with just like those garlic, the onions on the bottom. We're going to add a little bit of celery to the bottom of that pan. No more salt at that time. Probably just let these soften probably for about three to four minutes. And then that's when you want to add your, your um, carrots as well. All right. So now you want to add your carrots to the pot. And just get all of that nice and soft. Like I said, this is a vegetable soup. So I love to have a nice hearty amount of vegetables and I love to have actually carrots in my vegetables or in my vegetable soup I should say and the reason being is because of the beta carotene that's into um inside of carrots and also I love to use strands that have a lot of beta carotene in it because it's great for gut health 
Today we're not using a strand that is not so high in beta carotene, but make sure when you're talking to your bud tender, you make sure you seek strands that are higher in like that terpene content. And the reason being is because it's like has great anti-inflammatory benefits as well. And so Durban poison is one that is like a big go-to for mine. Make sure that you have like a few hours allotted so you can like hang out on the couch, but it's, it's a great strand. All right. So this is looking really good here, guys. So this is when you're going to start adding, perfect, a little bit of your tomatoes. Normally, with, with gastrointestinal issues, tomatoes are a, a tricky subject. But what I found out is that like if you remove the skin and the seeds from tomato, you don't have the same reaction as if you had the exact like a whole tomato, you know. And so in my cooking, I started to de-seed or take off the skins inside of tomatoes. And that was when I was going through <clears throat> of eliminating and reintroducing. So now I can actually have a whole tomato because I found that that wasn't my trigger. And like I tell anyone that I work with, I encourage you to keep like a food journal or a log, definitely, because you have to know what works for you and everyone is different. All right, so at this point, these vegetables are getting really soft and they're getting good here. And you wanna add, I just wanna cut up the heat a little bit. You wanna add your tomatoes at this point. After you let those tomatoes sit down for probably about two minutes because I do believe that time is an ingredient for anything that I cook so I like to believe that everything has to have a marriage or a relationship to really kind of express those benefits and then also to get everything in time of like harmony together that's the way the food tastes good it can't good food cannot be rushed that's how I feel so let's just mix this up for a little while longer. And then this is when we're going to start adding our bud broth. I did touch on this a little bit earlier, but I absolutely love, this is something I put inside of all of my soups. I put it inside of like, if anything that I'm using that needs a stalk or needs water, I definitely use my bud broth. And what I mean by that is like, how do you make a bud broth, right? Who wants to know that? So, <clears throat> You can either start with like three quarts of water or a big pot of water. And what I do is I um, do a bouquet of fresh herbs and um, spices as well. I'm gonna quickly show you how I put it together. This is in cheesecloth. This is my preferred method, of course. But then also people don't have cheesecloth. And so I found this really cool nifty thing. You can find it on Amazon probably, like they rule the world. So you can probably um, put all of your spices inside of here. So inside of my bouquet, I add some rosemary. The top does come off. So I add some rosemary inside of there. I love a bay leaf because of the depth as well. And then you know rosemary for the anti-inflammatory benefits, the antimicrobial benefits. Like I love my garden. I love herbs. Like they're just awesome, right? And then also black pepper on my um, previous video we did talk about like the 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 beta the cb2 receptors and how um black pepper actually interacts with those the same way as like beta carophylline so i encourage you to use fresh black pepper inside of most of your cooking and just a rule of thumb if um the pepper makes you sneeze then it's old okay and so if you automatically smell into a jar a black pepper and you're like hot chew, then definitely put that to the side. I encourage you to use fresh spices and that's what we use in all of our blends. So here, I'm just gonna add that black pepper and then I do love thyme as well. It has like that citrusy type of flavor that is just, this is just really awesome. And so everything that is inside of that bouquet that I just held up is, is, is inside of here. And so at that point, what you want to do is use this like a spoon. I thought this was really nifty because then you can just stir in flavor. But this is how I create my bone broth. I start with a nice bouquet. I have some mirepoix like you saw, which is our um, carrots. We have our celery and we have our onions. Cook all of that down probably for about, mm, if we're doing vegetable, 45 minutes. If I'm having chicken, 
probably about six hours. And if I'm using a Dutch oven, I encourage you, and I'll probably do this in another recipe, leave it in the comments below if you want me to do that. But I would love to just like put the chicken in and then just throw it in the Dutch oven and then throw it inside of the oven for about six hours actually. And then once the bones and once everything just like cooks down, it's just like awesomeness, you know? And you're getting a lot of those nutrients. Cause I know that like a lot of people with Crohn's disease, it's a big thing to eat. You know, and so I found that sipping broths and popsicles and everything like that, they were great. And then also then and in, in, in also infusing those with um, cannabis was awesome because it gave me the nutrients necessary and then also the, can, the cannabinoids necessary as well. So let's get back to our soup, right? So we've had this like hanging out inside of the pan. It's looking really good. It's smelling really good. We're going to add our buddy broth now. So we're going to add that to the pan. So in this soup, some people like to add beans. Some people don't. This is something that I could keep inside of my diet, but it is a trigger for people with um, gastrointestinal issues. I can't stress it enough. Please keep a, a food journal and a cannabis log for any new food that you're introducing or eliminating. Because once you start reintroducing foods, it's like, okay, I remember what happened like when I ate that tomato. So make sure when you're introducing or eliminating new foods to keep a food journal. So I love kidney beans or I love black beans. So in this soup, we're just gonna add some kidney beans I prefer to use beans that are dried and then you soak them overnight. Probably just keep them in um, water, cover them completely with water, plastic wrap inside of a bowl, let them soak for about eight hours and then rinse them and then add them to the soup. I think that that's a great way because it's a more, um, a whole product. I like to know where my food comes from. So, I mean, what better way than that? Just a dried bean, right? And then out of a can, it's kind of like, what juices are you using? How long has it been on the shelf, you know? So just eating clean is something that is um, extremely important to someone who is dealing with gastrointestinal issue, issues. So we have our soup going on. It's looking really good. We're just going to let this hang out now. There's like nothing else that I can do except time. Like I said, time is an ingredient. So... Yeah, check back about 45 minutes and then this soup should be ready. All right, so the soup has been simmering for about 45 minutes. If you're using beans that are um, cooked, then that's probably about 45 minutes. If you're using something like a raw bean that you have soaked overnight, then I would probably let that go for about an hour, an hour and a half. So at that point, what you wanna do is remove that spice mix that we put together that bouquet of all of like that goodness of the rosemary and thyme you just want to get that out the pot super simple just fish it out and just put it inside of a bowl to the side nothing fancy and then at the very end what i like to add it's just like a good cup of spinach. You don't want to overcook it. You want your vegetables to be bright and vibrant. In other videos, I talk about brown foods and how basically when your foods are brown, all the life has been cooked out of it. So be mindful of the temperatures and just really try to get the most out of your food. And you do that by steaming or not overcooking, you know, into oblivion is as I say. So you add that spinach down there. And now it's time for just a little bit of infusion. All recipes, I don't want you to think that I am forgetting you. I do this at home. I've been cooking with cannabis for quite some time. And so all of the measurements and everything will be left in the comments below. But this is just at home and after years of me doing this on my own. So we're going to add about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil that has been infused with blue dream we did speak about that into our pot at this time we want to make sure that our temperature is not too high 
our um, CBD starts to decarb or evaporate around 392 degrees. And so your boiling point is around 212. It's scientific a little bit, but you just want to make sure that it's at a simmer. Let's just stay in that safe range. You know, you don't have to think too much when you're cooking. We do not want that. So all of that spinach is inside of there. You then have your CBD or you have your THC infused oil running through it. At that point, it's time to eat, right? Okay, so let's get this off of the stove. You don't want it to cook too much further because like I said, you don't want to start cooking out all of that good nutrients of the actual spinach. All right. So how I like to serve it, if you are gluten free, then definitely don't do any bread. Sometimes I'll do like a flaxseed cracker. Let me know if you're interested because I would definitely make that video. Maybe the next one if you leave it in the comments below. But what I do is just bowl this up. You just want to get a lot of that broth because like I said, we're using our bud broth or your buddy broth because if you're using that in any type of soup or anything that calls for water, you want to make sure you sneak that in because it has so many nutrients and goodness that your body needs for homeostasis and health and happiness. And that is what Green Panther Chef is all about. This super simple recipe is packed with nutrients it has your proteins it has your magnesium it has your folate and it's my go-to for health and happiness so if you're interested or if you want any more recipes like this make sure you like subscribe or share to green panther chef and i will talk to you soon peace guys